This movie is number two in a series of five that demonstrate the basic use of FME Desktop as a tool for data translation and transformation. Each movie covers the content from one chapter of the FME Desktop tutorial. This chapter covers basic methods for translating spatial data from one format to another. Format translations are a key method by which FME supports spatial data interoperability. When data is translated between formats, without any additional transformation or restructuring of data, it is known as a quick translation. The two examples included in this movie show how to carry out a quick translation in two FME applications, the FME Quick Translator and FME Workbench. The first example shows how to translate data format using the FME Quick Translator. In this case I'll translate a PNG format satellite image into a GeoTIFF format. Although this particular data set is raster data, the same techniques apply to any format and type of data supported by FME. Here I've started the FME Quick Translator through the Windows Start menu. In the Quick Translator, I define the translation by selecting File, Translate from the menu bar. In this dialog, I can now define the translation I want to carry out. Notice that it's similar to the dialog from the FME Universal Viewer, but differs because it has parameters defining what format to write the data in. First, I'll set the source format and pick the data to be translated. Now I'll define the required destination format and choose where the data is to be written to. Finally, I click the OK button to start the translation. The data is read, translated and written out in a new format and location. You can see in Windows Explorer that the GeoTIFF file has been written. And here is the output. The other way to carry out a format translation is in FME Workbench. FME Workbench has two obvious advantages over the Quick Translator. It allows the translation to be saved and reused, and it allows customization of the process to take place. Before attempting to use Workbench, I'll cover some of the important components of the user interface. The interface that is shown in this screenshot. Number one is a menu bar and toolbar that contains commands for setting up a translation. File tools let you create, open and save workspaces, run a translation, pause a translation, and stop one already in progress. Edit tools let you cut, copy and paste objects, and undo and redo changes. View tools let you explore the workbench canvas. They include select, pan, zoom in, zoom out, and zoom to extents. Insert tools let you add new objects to a workspace. Many objects in Workbench have a context-sensitive menu with shortcuts to the above, which can be opened by right-clicking the object. Number two in this image is the Navigator window. The Navigator window contains all the parameters and settings for controlling a workspace, for example where to read and write data, and how to do so. Number three is the Canvas window. The Canvas is where you can graphically define the flow of data through a translation. Numbers 4 and 5 are a Transformer Gallery and Transformer Description window. Although they won't be used in this example, Transformers are a key piece of FME functionality. Number 6 is the FME Log window. This records the results of a translation as it is carried out. The second example shows how to translate data format using FME Workbench. Here I'll translate some Map Info tab format data into a GML dataset. As you can see, I already have FME Workbench open. In the Start screen, I'll choose the option to Generate a Workspace. This will open the Generate Workspace dialog. I'm now starting to define my translation. This is very similar to the dialog in the FME Quick Translator. In fact, the fields for defining data format and location are identical.
Now I can define the output format and the output data set. The one other setting I need to check for is a workflow option. In this case I want to ensure it is set to static schema. At this point I simply need to click OK to generate the workspace. The translation is now created, although not yet started. A translation defined like this in Workbench is called a workspace. The objects in the workspace represent what is called schema in FME. Data model is an equivalent term. Objects on the left hand side represent a data layer being read by an FME reader. Objects on the right represent a data layer being written by an FME writer. Those objects in FME terminology are called feature types. If there were multiple layers in the source data, it would be represented as multiple feature types. I can see what attributes belong to the data by clicking the expand icons like this. The lines between objects are known as connections. They represent the flow of data from the reader to the writer. The thinner connections represent the matching of attributes. The green arrows on the end of each connection are called ports. These may change color as data is connected and disconnected. As mentioned, one advantage of FME Workbench is that translations can be saved for reuse. This is done by clicking the Save button and then entering a file name. The extension for workspace files is .fmw. Now I can run the workspace by clicking the Run button. As before, the data is read, translated, and then written to a new location. Now the data is translated, I can inspect the output in the FME Universal Viewer. I could open it up using tools within the viewer, but I can also do it directly from Workbench. I simply right-click on my Writer feature type and choose the option Inspect. Notice how FME Universal Viewer starts up and an open dataset dialog automatically filled in. All I need to do now is click OK to open the data. Now this looks correct, but I can query a feature to make sure. Remember, if you do need any technical assistance while using FME, the best starting point is fmepedia.safe.com. From here you can navigate to downloads, examples and documentation, plus also get in touch with the Safe Software support team. That concludes this movie on format translation with FME. The next section in this FME desktop tutorial is structural transformation. On behalf of everyone at Safe Software, thank you for taking the time to view this FME desktop training presentation. We hope it was time well spent for you. If you have further questions, please do not hesitate to contact Safe Software at any of the addresses listed, or look for further technical information at fmepedia.safe.com. Thank you.